Hello and welcome back and if you are here for the very first time you are so welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. My name is Jane and I live here with my husband Michael who is behind the camera and we share our very thrifty and frugal life with you. We have so much to share with you so make sure if you enjoy this video that you give it a like. Also make sure that you hit the subscribe button because we really want to share so much with you and we don't want you to miss it. This week is all about some really thrifty and frugal recipes that you might like to try at home. Here's the first of our struggle meals for this week. Today we have got Breton buckwheat pancakes or savoury buckwheat pancakes and this is what you need to make them. You will need 500 millilitres of cold water. You'll need one egg, 250 grams of buckwheat flour or sarasan flour as it's called here, and seven grams of salt. You'll need some kind of a frying pan or galette pan. You'll need to whisk it all together, or you can do what I do, and you can use your blender stick to make it. And simply to make them, you combine all the ingredients and blend until it's a very, very smooth paste. This is what they look like when they are finished. They look kind of lacy. I'm going to try and hold one up and it's kind of holy. And it needs to be holy for when you cook it again because these get cooked again. I make mine quite small so they fit in the Tupperware box that I store them in because these will be our lunches for a few days. Okay, to make a galette complete, you will need one slice of ham per person, a small handful of grated cheese per person, a couple of ounces, maybe an ounce of cheese, maybe 30 grams of cheese per person, and one egg each. Galette, cheese, egg and ham. I think it's good sometimes to see how a home cook presents it. People who work in a creperie, creperie here in Brittany do this day in day out, hundreds a day, they perfect it. This is what it looks like when you do it at home, they might break a bit when you turn them over. They are delicious, they're quite filling on their own, they're great with a little bit of salad. Breton Galette with a bit of salad. For dinner tonight, we have coronation chicken, potato wedges and salad. And the salad is going to be coleslaw. To make potato wedges, simply wash them, cut them into wedges and parboil them until they are only just cooked. Drain well, toss them in a little oil and salt and pop them onto a very hot baking tray in a very hot oven 
20 to 30 minutes until they are crispy. Okay, to go with our coronation chicken and our potato wedges, we are having coleslaw. And coleslaw is slim, simply shredded cabbage, grated carrots, finely sliced onions and mayonnaise. And that's it. Here's how I make the coleslaw. I finely shred the cabbage just with a regular knife and the same with the onion and I just grate my carrot with a box grater. I then add about two tablespoons of mayonnaise I like the French mayonnaise that has a Dijon mustard in it. It's quite vinegary. And that's it. I add about two tablespoons, two dessert spoons of mayonnaise and give it a stir through. Here is my cooked chicken. And I would, you can use any chicken. Leftover roast chicken, chicken thigh, chicken breast, chicken tenders, as you call them in America, any chicken you like. Now, this is a breakfast bowl, so there is my hand, and you can see it's just a little, a little bowl. So, although it looks a lot, it's there's just enough there for the two of us. In fact, there's plenty for the two of us but we keep the costs down. So as you can see, there's not a lot of chicken there. Okay, here's my coronation chicken ingredients. I have two small chicken breasts that I lightly roasted. One and a half tablespoons of mayonnaise. One tablespoon of mango chutney one heaped teaspoon of madras curry powder that's a hot spicy curry powder and two tablespoons of raisins and that's it stir it all together in the uk this is often leftover chicken used in this way and finely minced for sandwiches in the uk this is normally a very popular sandwich filling but if you have chunks of chicken it's great just to eat for your dinner. Here's the finished result. Potato wedges, homemade, homemade coleslaw and coronation chicken. It's quite a cheap meal. The only expensive part is the chicken and we've got about one euro of chicken each. So the rest of it is not expensive at all. Cabbage, carrots and onions full of vitamins, really good for you. Potatoes, very min minimal amount of oil. Tonight, I'm making rainbow risotto. Great thing about this, it's quick to make, it takes one pan, there's only one pan to wash it up, and it's really cheap to make. So, here's what goes in my rainbow risotto. And you can see I've called it a rainbow risotto because there's lots of colour. I've got half a cup of green beans, half a cup of peas, these are frozen and defrosting, eight little mushrooms cut into quarters one medium red onion finely diced, one yellow pepper chopped. This is 300 grams of lardons. To be honest, I could have got away with half that amount. Three cloves of garlic. And for us, because this is going to be a bit for lunch tomorrow, one mug of rice. I'm using ground rice, but I'm gonna say this loud and clear. You can use any rice you've got. I then have got some parsley to finish it off with. 
I have 100 grams of hard Italian cheese and I'm going to say this loud and clear. You can use any hard Italian cheese, any. I then have one litre of stock which is from stock cube and water. I have another stock cube on standby because if I need more stock I will make it. There we are, that's my ingredients. Lovely colourful, that's why I call it Rainbow Risotto. First thing I do is I fry off the lardons. I basically want to release the fat because I need that to cook the rest of my ingredients. So I have rendered down the bacon and it's released its fat, all the lard. Now I'm going to add in my mushrooms, my peppers and my onions. I'm going to cook those until they are soft and at the end when they are soft I will then add the garlic. I've lightly cooked the vegetables until they've softened just a bit and then I add the rice and stir it through. The rice absorbs the bacony flavours. Now if you want to faff about and you've got longer in your day than I've got, I'm a housewife, I'm not Gordon Ramsay. You would put in your stock a bit at a time, a bit at a time. Well, I'm hungry. I want to get it cooked. So this is what normal people do with their stock. They put the whole lot in, in one go. And they get their vegetables. And they put it all in, in one go. And they cook it and stir it. And as it needs more liquid, they add it. Okay. As the rice starts to absorb all the stock, I notice I'm using stock from the stock cube, not fancy rendered down homemade stock, and I'm not making it with white wine or anything like that. But as then, I have my next pot of stock cube and water, and this time I'm just going to add half of it this time and carry on cooking. Something I do almost as I'm finishing off the cooking, and I've probably got about another 10 minutes of cooking and adding more stock, is I just take a pinch of rice, eat it, when there's no more crunch, I know it's cooked. So, I eventually added all of the stock, so that took two litres of stock in the end. I have tested it with my spoon, there is no crunch left. You can see it's glossy and smooth. And then I'm going to take my 100 grams of hard Italian cheese. This was only a euro from my budget supermarket. And I do that. And I tip it all in and I'll stir that through. And there it is, finished glossy rainbow risotto with lots of hard Italian cheese. And there it is. Rainbow risotto. And we have enough for tonight's dinner and for us both to have tomorrow's lunches. And it microwaves well. So there we are. Another struggle meal. Rainbow Risotto. Now today, I'm going off menu, just because I feel like it. I can always rustle up something from our stores. So today I'm going to make croque monsieur for supper. Not really very hungry today. We've had quite a hearty lunch of a leftover risotto. 
So we're just going to eat something a bit lighter for dinner tonight. I'm going to start by making a white sauce. After I've made a white sauce, I will add cheese to it. It will then be a cheese sauce. My ingredients to make the white sauce are 50 grams of sunflower spread, or you can use butter, and 50 grams of plain flour. I'm using corn flour, and half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, and a sprinkle of salt. And I'm going to melt the butter, then blend in the, the flour, then blend in the mustard and the milk, and I will pop it in the microwave and keep stirring it every minute until it is thickened. I melted the sunflower spread in the microwave. I will now add 50 grams of flour and one teaspoon of mustard. Here is my finished white sauce. It took about five minutes in the microwave. Every couple of minutes I took it out, I gave it a good stir with a spoon, making sure there weren't any lumps. And to be honest, if there are any lumps, don't sweat over it, you've got teeth. Now, you can see here my scales are at zero. I'm going to add 50 grams of cheese and see if that will be enough. Forty-five. Oh, look at that for an almost spot-on amount. Fifty-two. There we are. I'm then going to give that a stir through, and the heat of the cheese sauce will the heat of the sauce will melt the cheese, and you have cheese sauce. Okay. I have taken my bread. I have buttered one side of it, and because I'm going to cook it later, I put the butter side down. Next, I have added two tablespoons of the cheese sauce to each piece of bread and spread it over. Then add the ham. So you take the next piece of buttered bread or sunflower spread or whatever you use, place that on top another two tablespoons of the cheese sauce on top of the bread and add some grated cheese. I have used French Emmental cheese. You can choose, you can use whatever cheese you have. The good thing about these is you could make a whole baking tray full of these for your children, for your family, a whole tray of them and you're going to pop these in the oven, in a hot oven, for about 15 minutes and that's it. How easy is that? This can become your new quick go-to struggle meal, cheap to make, really cheap to make. So this is my croque monsieur. The underside of this piece of bread is buttered. It's going to go into a hot pan to crisp up the underside. They don't both fit in at the same time. I'll then pop it back in my oven tray and stick it under the grill until all the cheese and all the toast on top is all bubbly and crispy. Whilst this is just gently in its pan, the oven is on, but I have just got it to the grill setting. They have both fitted in my frying pan. So when these are crispy underneath, I will then stick it under the grill to cook the top part. So there we are, another struggle meal, croque monsieur. Okay. Next on the struggle meals list, lentil lasagna or veggie lasagna. Quick whiz through the ingredients. So, I need a cup of lentils. I'm just going to show how I compromise here. 
I don't have enough red lentils, so I'll top that up with small brown lentils. I will then have a heaped tablespoon of mixed herbs, salt and pepper to season, a tin of tomato puree, a large tin or two regular tins of tomatoes, half a litre of cheese sauce, I showed how to make that before, two cloves of garlic that I will crush, one stock cube, two large stalks of celery cut up, one onion, six mushrooms, one pepper, two large carrots and nine sheets of lasagna. ingredients are in here now. I'm going to add the tin of tomato puree, and I'm just going to let this cook for about 20 minutes to begin with. The lentils will swell up with water. I have put an extra half of tin of water in there. And as this cooks down, if it needs more water, I'll add more water to it. But for now, I'll just let this cook down. Right, let's put this lasagna together. Here is the finished tomatoey, lentily, vegetably base. I put my pasta in the bottom with some oil underneath it. I try and get two or three layers as best I can. My cheese sauce is cold. It's, I prepared it earlier and I have half a litre of cheese sauce here. Now I know the traditional recipe calls for things like ricotta cheese, but who can afford that? I can't. So I make a nice bechamel sauce and then I add cheese to it. Just make sure I get everything out of here. Half a litre of milk in here and that's not cheap. There we go. There's my bechamel sauce on top. Then, excuse my sticky fingers, I am going to add about a mug full of cheese onto there. This is Emmental cheese. This is the cheapest cheese France has. You can use any cheese. Maybe if you had a bit of Parmesan or Italian cheese to go on top, that would be nice. Then, because I like to get as many vegetables and everything as I possibly can, just make it pretty. A few tomatoes on top, not at all traditional, but then it isn't traditional to put lentils in a lasagna either. And there it is. That can be refrigerated until I need it. Fish cakes, so cheap. Fish cakes is basically fish that's already cooked, mixed up with mashed potato, shaped in some kind of a fish burger or a fish patty, coated in something crispy and lightly fried. They are heavenly. But let's go through my terribly thrifty, really cheap, frugal version of it. Okay, I cook the potatoes in the microwave so they're soft. I'm then going to use a tin of fish. I'm going to use salmon at 138 a tin. You could use mackerel, pilchards, tuna, whatever you like. I've got parsley in the garden, so I'm going to finely chop the parsley. A real 
boost to this is I'm going to add the zest of one lemon. Once I've made them, I will beat an egg and I will roll them in the beaten egg. Sorry, I roll them in the flour first and then the beaten egg, then the flour. Now you're thinking, where's your breadcrumbs, Jane? I haven't got any breadcrumbs. I can't eat bread. So I've got this packet of tortilla chips here. Absolutely no wheat in it. I can eat them. I'm going to put some in a bag. I'm going to smash them to smithereens with a rolling pin and I will have crumbs that I'll pop on a plate and I will use that for breadcrumbs. However, you could use crackers to make breadcrumbs. You could also use cornflakes. But there's my basic ingredients. So we peeled and mashed the potatoes, finely chopped the parsley, the zest of the lemon is in here, tin of salmon, broke it up with a fork, I'll mix it all together and shape it into fish cakes. Now I divided this into four because we're greedy. But if you've got children, you can make these half this size. So there we are. That is a quarter of it and it fits into my hand. I'm going to shape it. It's not a perfect size, it's not a perfect shape. I'm going to quickly pop it in the flour. Try and get the flour all over it. I'm using corn flour because I don't eat wheat. I'm then going to lightly pop it in the egg. Coat it with that a couple of times. There's the egg all over it. And then I'm going to pop it in my breadcrumbs, or in my case, old tortilla chips. Now I didn't add any salt to my ingredients because these tortilla chips have salt on them. Stick them all over it. If you can hear that lovely noise in the background, that's my little puppy dog. There we are. Nice crispy breadcrumbs all over it. Gives it a lovely crispy finish and you can see either side of it. And there it is. And I will pop that onto my baking tray. Here are the finished fish cakes with a wedge of lemon and some tartar sauce. I pop them on a baking tray, bake them at 220 centigrade. I put a little bit of oil over it and although you can't see it, they are actually crispy and soft inside. I hope you found some of those recipes enjoyable and who knows, you might cook them at home too. Tell me, what is your absolute struggle meal? You know, when you're really broke but you've got a family to feed, what is it that you put on the table? What is your classic struggle meal? Just leaves me to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.